Hi everybody, I'm Week Swingle. And I'm Bill Kerr. And this is Ginkgo. Our, our current modern quilt studio assistant. He's a foster dog that we are fostering and it's a blustery cold week ahead and he has a pretty good natural coat but for um, night walks and that sort of thing we wanted to make him a coat that's going to keep him warmer and drier. Especially because we've got some sleet in the forecast and our most current foster dogs have been small. He's the first really big one we've had. So we thought this is a good time to make a tutorial and we're going to walk you through the process of measuring your dog using the worksheet that you can download and if you look at the description in the YouTube um, header you'll see that and then you work with that and Weeks and I will take turns walking you through a few steps like laminating a cotton quilting fabric to use as a waterproof coat putting the fleece liner on. Yeah, I also want to show you a smaller version um, that I did for some chihuahuas and toy poodles. So if you've got a smaller dog and you want a simpler pattern, I can show you how to do that too. So this pattern, the worksheet we have, really is geared towards this kind of medium or larger sized dog. But the whole idea works just as well if you're doing a small dog. You can use the same general form, take the measurements, and one of the things we're going to do is make a little muslin just to make sure before we go to the effort of laminating and insulating and all that, we'll, we'll do the muslin first and you'll see how this works. So we're gonna measure this great little dog, big dog, and then guide you step through step, step by step. So stay with us, we're gonna show you how to custom fit a, dog, a w waterproof, winterproof um, coat for a dog of any size. Time to winterize our dogs. Okay, let's do it. Hey. All right, so I'm gonna be working with Ginkgo here to show you some of the basics, working with the worksheet that you've you can print out on our website. If you look at the description in the YouTube header, there's information on printing out this worksheet for getting the measurements of your great dog. Yeah. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a measurement from the collar to the base of the tail. And that's going to be the top of the raincoat or um, jacket. And so that here I have is 20 inches. That's measurement A. Measurement B is going around loosely around the neck, a little lower than you might expect because that's also going to be where the, um, uh, it kind of goes down a bit rather than straight across. You want to be able to access the collar for a leash when you're walking your dog. So I got 22 inches there. Next is to get the girth. And you want to get the girthiest part of your dog. And every dog, of course, is a little different. Yeah. Here, this is a 27 inch girth that we've got. Thank you, Ginkgo. Ginkgo's a 43 pound dog, so that's just a good way, you know, it's a good barometer for. Yeah, as you're looking at this, trying to figure out if he's close to your dog. And this will work for small dogs too. Okay, come on, get up, sweetie. Come on, come on, buddy. Come on, get up. There we Let's go. Because what I need now is from the spine to the drop. And the drop here is, I'm going to call it 10 inches. Because I like it to be just a little longer. Some people like a, a, a shorter coat, but the whole point here is to protect him. So I'm going to keep it long. And also to minimize how wet he gets, because we're going to be using this coat for both uh, rain and snow. Yeah. And now I'm going to go from the center of the breastbone all the way back. And this is kind of tricky too, because I found I've tried to measure him a few times and he, he moves a lot. But I got 24 inches right there. So I want to show you that the first dog coat I made. This is a cardboard cutout of a foster we used to have named Marathon. And I made my first dog coat last uh, winter for him. He was a uh, long-legged but short-haired chihuahua. So he really needed a winter coat. So what I wanted to do was take um, one of our fabrics from our Georgetown line of fabric um, and I wanted to laminate it and then put a shearling um, liner on it and then as I thought about dog coats that we had seen commercially and researched I liked the idea of a velcro 
um, or hook and loop closure on the top of the dog. I find it harder to reach under the dog. Um, and uh, so I just used really simple um, webbing, nylon webbing, and um, you know, that was enough. Um, Marathon was a male dog, so especially when you're thinking about the cut of it, uh, with male dogs you want to have the strap uh, be positioned enough that it's not going to get soiled while you're walking the dog. Um, if you've got a female dog, you know, the the strap can be wider underneath um, the belly of the dog, but you really kind of don't want to go too much farther than, you know, the bottom of the rib cage or sort of mid rib cage. Um, but again, this was a very, very simple cut, and because it's a small dog, just the width of the nylon strap um, was sufficient. Um, he got a little bit wetter underneath, um, but there wasn't as much real estate as there is with a big dog, so it didn't matter too much. So again, it was just a very simple um, hook and loop closure around the neck and one on the top of the dog. I, um, I've seen um, dog uh, coats with buttons and that sort of thing, which I would really avoid as a choking hazard in case the coat gets caught on something. So we always like this hook and loop um, closure for the dog. And um, this can actually even be hand washed. Once it's laminated, regular um, quilting cotton is laminated, it doesn't do well in the washing machine, but um, it can, the whole thing can be hand washed and, um, and dried in case it gets dirty. So that was the approach for the smaller dog. So let's show you how we're going to um, make the, the bigger version for Ginkgo. So the measurement sheet is really useful at this point because what I've determined is the, the length of the coat. And if you look at the measurement sheet, it has a few additional things like uh, formulas, basically adding a couple inches to certain measurements, and that will all help with the seam allowances. But what I've determined is I needed a piece of muslin to try this out that's going to be, I'm looking at my measurements right now, it's going to be 21 by 26. So I'm going to trim this down. Notice that I folded it in half. That's because a coat like this is symmetrical. And then I'm using my sheet to do a couple of measurements. One of them is the distance of the back from the neck to the tail, base of the tail was 20 inches and I add one inch for seam allowance. So I need 21 inches and 21 inches, mark right there. And then I need another one, which is the collar area, which was 22 divided by three. So that's just over seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And what this does, I'll actually use a pen that's easier to see. This is just going to be a gentle arc that will end up going nicely around Ginkgo's um, neck. And then the other thing is, I'm gonna kind of curve this area right here, I'm drawing a curve, where it'll Velcro, and a curve at the end. And then we find that just a gentle wave at the bottom helps contour to the dog nicely. And I'm gonna scoop around there, come up, and this isn't exact, it's just, I'm just trying to get nice curves. And now what I'm going to do is take a look and see how this works on a lovely dog. So now we're going to see how the muslin yeah. works on this wonderful yeah. dog. See how compliant he is. And so we look at this and there's a nice about two inches of overlap. And you see it covers the flanks nicely. This is great. And then the last thing I'll be needing to do is make some sort of kind of girth strap that will go under and around. And that'll be a four inch piece that we make later. And that 
you know, we'll attach that after we have the top done. We don't have to figure that out quite yet. But this looks good, so we'll let him play. And Weeks will show you what we do next in terms of making and laminating the top. Okay, here we go, big boy. Ooh. So once you have your, um, your, lamin your vinyl laminate piece cut, you're gonna peel it from the back. And it's got a sticky side and then a shiny side. And you're gonna take the sticky side. I'll need that in a minute, so don't, don't get rid of it. And I'm gonna place it on the, just a little bit over the mark that I had made earlier where that belly band is gonna go. And now I'm gonna take that protective paper and there's a shiny side that it used to be the vinyl was adhered to and you're gonna place that face down on the vinyl and now you're gonna press for eight seconds. Now what's, what I like about this, um, the way this works, is that you can see the area that's overlapping and you just don't iron that part, so don't touch the iron to the laminate at all, but this um, gives you the ability. I like to kind of tack it down all over a little bit first, and then I do the eight seconds. Okay, so we're gonna zoom through the eight seconds. And after we've done, um, each, each side of it, uh, we'll flip it over and do the other side. Okay, so once you've gotten that side, you can peel back the paper. Okay, so now I've flipped it over and I'm gonna press on the other side. You don't need the paper on this side, but be careful that you don't go over the edge and get any of the adhesive or the uh, laminate on your iron. Once you've ironed everything, uh, make sure it, uh, it's cooled off a little bit so before you work with it. So now you're gonna have your, um, this is our template that we're gonna use to cut it out, and we're gonna fold this in half. Now one of the things about once you've laminated fabrics, you might worry that it's gonna get wrinkled up or whatever, but you can always touch it up later with that um, same paper um, protection um, because we're gonna turn it inside out and it's gonna get wriggly, but then we can put the, the uh, paper back on it and smooth out some of the wrinkles. So now I'm gonna fold up the paper that I have and we're gonna cut out the template. I like laminating the fabric first um, before I cut out the template because the fabric lies flatter, but also the um, you lessen the chances of getting any of the uh, laminate onto your iron. Okay, so I'm gonna use some pin cushions because the, uh, the laminate makes everything very slippery right now. And I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting out my template. And again, the fabric is folded over as is the template. All right, so once you have the top fabric uh, cut, grab your um, the liner. We decided to use black non-pillable fleece for this particular project. Um, so we're gonna use the um, the laminated top of it to cut, to use as a template, because it's a little stiffer now, it's a little easier to cut. So we're gonna cut our black fleece using the top as a template. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut, um, cut this with scissors because it's a little bit easier because the, uh, I don't wanna cut into my template. So open it up and put your fleece on top of the, um, you're gonna put the flannel on, I'm sorry, right sides together. And we're gonna turn this inside out so you'll have a, a really nice, so we don't have to bind those edges and they'll look nice. But I'm just gonna clip in a few strategic places 
So I'm going to hand this over to Bill at the sewing machine who's going to kind of finish sewing it up for you. I'm starting at the back, not quite at the center, because I'm going to leave about a six to eight inch gap that's not sewn, and so I'm gonna have to pull this through itself to turn it right side, right side out. So you're gonna do um, a back tack to start, and then with a quarter inch seam allowance, I'm just gonna go around. So once you've gone all the way around, you'll have left this gap, and you can reach in the gap. And it's a little awkward, but you can pull this whole thing through. And it feels terrible as you do it, because you feel like you're destroying and crunching up and wrinkling the vinyl that you've ironed on, but that really will get smoothed out again later. So. Like turning a pillowcase, basically. Bit by bit, we're seeing the shape come to life. But do you see how wrinkled and terrible the vinyl looks? Not to worry. The first time I used this, it really had me concerned, but now I know it's no big deal at all. I'm actually going to take this over to my ironing board and smooth it out. And then I'm going to bring it back here and edge stitch to hold this all together. So we pressed this, I'm going to show you both sides, pressed it very nicely. Oh, there's even a little ginkgo fur there. We pressed it nicely and worked out the kind of milky, crackly look that you get after you turn it inside out and work the edges as smooth as we could, pressing those to get them ready for top stitching. With the top stitching, I've switched my foot here. I'm now going to use a regular foot rather than the walking foot. Just it's a little easier for me for this edge stitching. And I'm now going to begin edge stitching, closing up that gap. So I've folded my seam allowances in and just gonna adjust this to edge stitch all the way around. So you have the nice edge stitching that holds it nice and tight. You'll notice that one of the nice details is the fleece rolls out just a little bit, giving you that black edge, which, which looks great. Now, as you're sewing, if you do miss sew or if you have to tear something out, don't freak out about all the holes in the vinyl. If you just put it under the heat again, using that um, paper that came with the vinyl as a press cloth, you can fuse those holes back and you won't see those mistakes. And the last tip I think of, a tip I was thinking of right now is make sure you have a full bobbin when you're sewing because it's a real pain to change the bobbin when you're dealing with vinyl. It's easier just to get going and go all the way through it. So when I was off camera, I just prepared the belly strap from my measurements and I'm going to do the same thing I did with the um, other piece. I'm going to sew these together. The only thing I'm doing differently this time is I'm going to just put this face down and I'm going to stitch around and then turn in and then trim it and then turn it inside out. I just find sometimes when it's a small piece it's easier to sew on top of something large like this and then trim afterwards. I've done that, I'm going to go trim it, and then I left the gap, and I'm going to pull it through that. So I'll be back in just a moment. So I've turned it right side out, and pressed to smooth this out, and I've tucked the seams of that open end in, and I'm going to top stitch all the way around. So now I've got this. I had double checked on Ginkgo just to make sure it was in a good location 
and I've clipped this in place and I'm just going to sew this on. So the last things we have to do, we have to attach some Velcro for the closure in the front and then there's one more detail we're doing. We're going to add reflective tape because we take a lot of late night walks. You can buy reflective tape in lots of sizes at any sewing store. What, what I'm going to do with this is start it like this, go under the belly and all the way around so that it, it goes all the way around and the Velcro will close it up here at the top. I don't ever like to have raw edges, so I'm going to tuck the raw edge under and sew this all the way. There we go. And I've left this extra long right now because I'm going to go find um, Ginkgo, bring him down here, and figure out the exact length before I trim this and put the Velcro on it. Yeah, so Ginkgo, look at him. Oh, he's going to look great. I'm going to have this fit so nicely there. This is going to wrap around. Oh, and you know what? I'm going to leave it just the way it is and put Velcro closure there. Whoops. I've sewn this all on and added a little Velcro for it to close. Come here, Kinko. Come here. Now we've got the world's greatest model. Let's see what he thinks. So this goes around the front, Velcros, cinches up. Oh my goodness, it's a perfect fit. Look at that, let me show this off. Now I've got my coat on and we're about to go outside. Let's go.